Thunder. 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 Thunder Geeks are live. Hello, Thundarians. This is uh, Thunder Geeks brought to you by 102.7 FM CILU or around the world at luradio.ca. Thank you so much, Ketacon. So, we're your Thunder Geeks. Now, interesting story. Our show actually started right here at Ketacon. Um, me and Kairu over here, not part of our original staff, well, our regular staff. Kyle actually came in special. He's our special guest today. We absolutely love Kyle. This whole thing started when me and Kyle hijacked two mics in a room, started talking about absolutely nothing, and by the end of the hour, we filled the room by accident. <laughs> So, uh, during that, when we were actually promoting for KetaCon, uh, we got randomly approached by our station manager, Jason. And Jason's like, oh, I, I kind of like what you guys like, do. Would you like to come do a, sta you know, a radio show? And Kyle, Kyle, what was our reaction? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, do. we do. So, so I guess we'll introduce yourselves. I'm Andrew. I'm Rob. I'm Megan. And I'm Kyle. Kyle. And we're your Thunder Geeks. So, we're going to talk a little bit about something that's near and dear to our heart. Not anime. Guy, have you watched any anime lately? Does Dragon, Dragon Ball count? count? Dragon Ball so counts. Resurrection, Resurrection F. F. Oh, Booyah! Absolutely. absolutely. Woo! At Resurrection of F, I was super impressed by it. The only thing that I have watched as of recent was Show by Rock because it's adorable and I love music. And he's got a crush on Shingen Crimson. I do. Who I have doesn't? a major man crush on the... Oh. Crow is amazing. Crow I'm, and Rom. I ship them. Whoa, whoa, I will whoa, totally whoa. ship them. Rom, I... No, you can't have him. You, I, I can totally have Rom. I'm gonna, I'll fight <laughs> you on that. Ready? <laughs> Go! <laughs> Rom, what have you been watching? I've been watching nothing because I found a live-action Attack on Titan movie. Ooh. Now... now what did By you... By round of applause, who, who here is an Attack on Titan fan? By same round, who's seen the movie so far? I wish. Oh, oh my God, so people. it's Rob that's going to give the first impression here now. No spoilers, but if you've seen season one, you, you, you get the basic premise. The basic premise. Um, nom, nom, yeah. nom. Now, Everyone dies. Um, nom, 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 nom. But the cool thing about it is the Titans are live action people, just digitally grown. So it's not like CG, blah, 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 not there. It's real people. And that makes it so much creepier than the anime because the, they've got makeup making those faces that the Titans have just permanently on them. And it's just as gory as the anime, if not more, because it's like physically there and ripping and throwing and guts and galore. We now, all know that Rob has a fetish for practical effects as opposed to 3D effects. Yeah, I really do because practical effects are physically there. They look real and impressive. Boom. You, you can never really top just the visceral feeling you get from a practical effect movie. Uh, me and Rob have always been huge, huge B-horror movie fans. But for Attack on Titan, the movie, I know it's gotten a ton of hate online where people are just like, this is the worst thing ever. See, here's the thing, though. If it's, you're going to be taking a 20-episode season and condensing it to an hour-and-a-half movie, you have to cut things out. You have to alter the story so it fits well. So yes, there are going to be some changes, but the changes work for the story. Because even if you haven't seen Attack on Titan, this works as a standalone movie. So it's Megan, what, what have you been watching? I haven't been watching anything either, unfortunately. I, between work and drawing, I, like, I cannot watch an anime and draw at the same time. I cannot physically multitask in that way. But I have read, um, I've been reading School, uh, school Prison. And oh. <laughs> It's I know they just got an anime recently. Yeah, it did get an anime. I haven't watched it. It's uh, if anyone knows School Prison, it's very etchy, very, <gasps> very etchy, very perverted, very masochistic, and I love it. I mean, it's it's, uh, it's about these guys who get prison imprisoned in an all girls school because they tried to peep in the girls' washroom when everyone was changing. So, to jail you go, and the entire time they are trying to get out of the school prison. But if the school prison is filled with girls and they were arrested for peeping at girls, doesn't that just like... No, 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 no. The prison is only for the boys. So you're saying this is a better option. 
<laughs> and uh, another <laughs> and another anime that or manga that I've been reading is Ore Monogatari. I don't know. Has anyone heard of this one? <laughs> yeah, the little wave. Yes, good, good, good. Uh, <laughs> I love this and I love this one because it's about uh, a big guy who has a heart of gold and he saves a girl on the subway who's getting felt up and they end up falling in love and the size difference is ridiculous and they are adorable. So Sounds like someone we know. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> now, I want to reveal your deepest, darkest secret. So, here's what I want to know. Omega, we'll start with Houston this time. I want to know your secret shame. What is the thing that you absolutely love that you don't want to tell anybody? I don't want to tell anyone. I mean, I, I like... Guilty pleasure. Give us a guilty <laughs> pleasure. I like Nicki Minaj. I don't know. That's <laughs> well, let's, let's, go, let's go a little nerdy here. I mean, what, what would be your childhood uh, you know, guilty pleasure? What's something you loved as a kid that you didn't want to tell anybody about? Oh, that's so hard. Um, okay, so there was these toys, and they were called Beebaws, I think. <laughs> okay. What were they? Boobas. I don't know. They were these little, they were like the Furby knockoffs and they like gave birth, okay? It what? Was like <laughs> they pushed an egg out of their stomach and they were like, baby, baby's coming. Okay. This and was a child for toy. It was a That's child the toy. The, what? <laughs> I'm a little lost too. Okay, so they were like alien creatures. They were alien creatures, and you put the little baby in the egg, and then you put the egg inside the mama, and you get to play with the mama, and like they had like a little sensories. You could tap them on the head. You could feed them little like flowers as like food. Are and you sure this was a toy, or you just found roadkill on the side? <laughs> and he's like, I want to see how much I can stuff it with like a piñata here. Did you have one? They were called Love Loves, and I have one. Yes, thank you. What was it called? They were called Love Loves. Love Loves. Love Loves. Love Loves. And yeah, I had, I had the baby one, but I didn't have uh, the mama one. And the baby one would be like, Mama? And I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I took you away from your mother. You're never going to see her again. You are a terrible, terrible person. So, so Kairu, I, I got two. So what is your current secret shame? My current, current secret shame. Current secret shame. Do you have any current secret Do you have Ponies. any shame? It's ponies. I knew it. I am, am no, I he hates ponies. I hate ponies. I stand alone. Thank you. And like 10 uh, people in this room are planning to kill us now. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Every year. Every year. Um, um, I'd, I'd say, say my, my secret, secret shame. shame. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really, really hide, hide anything, anything but... but uh, what a, okay, if you don't have one currently, what about childhood then? What's something as a kid? Because we all had something as a kid we absolutely loved, but if our friends found out, it'd be the end of the world. You know what? what? Screw it. Um... I loved, I loved like, like the, the big, big comfy, comfy couch that was like 10, 11 years awesome. old. Awesome. I absolutely loved, loved it. it. Oh my Luna God, and Molly, a clown and her <laughs> dolly. It was one of the, f okay, I, I have a long standing history of a hate of clowns because of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah. 1993, episode two, Zebo. I was like three or four years old, and this clown is following this kid who stole his nose from a fun house, and you never get to see the clown. So it's super low budget Canadian TV. However, because you never get to see him, you just see hints of him, I was terrified. I would not have my windows open at night. I had to have everything shut. I need to be able to see the entire room because of clowns. How about Romali? Still cool. What about what about, what about the, like the, classic, classic it? it? Did that, that not? No, no Tim no, Curry's I hilarious. Didn't. Absolutely. But the fact that you never see the clown makes it even scarier, and that's what Steven Spielberg did with Jaws. Yes. You never actually see the shark, so it makes it so much scarier. Oh my god. So, well, <laughs> to quote Tom Savini, the greatest special effect is the human imagination. That's true. And another thing, Kyle, about the big comfy couch, when my mom would vacuum, under, my, ma my mom had to vacuum when I wasn't home, or else I would pull a fit because she was killing the little dust, dust bunnies underneath the couches. <laughs> oh, and I was geez. like, I would just pull a fit. I'm like, you it's can't do that. <laughs> For me, I have to call shenanigans on Lunette a little bit. That 10 second tidy was never 10 seconds. I'm calling bull right here and right now. I demand an actual 10 second tidy. I can match that. that. See, you, you grab, grab a nice, a nice big, big carpet, like, like nice big carpet. carpet. Yep. yep. And you just shove it all underneath, underneath there, and that's, that's perfect. perfect. That's the that's the uh, 10 second Kyle tidy. It's just absolutely under the rug. Rob, what about you? What's what's your current secret shame? Because your it's child? something you introduced me to. Sonic Boom. I know. <laughs> that was mine too. Now, hey, hear me out. Hear me out. It it's good, but everything about it I should hate. 
The animation style is just weird, especially Knuckles. Yes. The concept, there isn't one. There's no, no concept. They just do whatever. Eggman, does he even count as a villain? He kind like, of. He, he calls out Sonic for a quote-unquote racial slur. Sonic Boom? If anyone's ever watched the old Donkey Kong Country series, you know it had nothing to do with Donkey Kong the Banana games. Banana Slamma! They I took the designs, song. they took vague concepts, and they just made a funny cartoon. Now, Sega obviously was not paying attention to what the writers and animators for Sonic Boom were doing. So, instead of writing something that was action or about the games, this is more in line of Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, the really bad comedy one from back in the day. However, the writing is pol it's, it's pol genius satire. So, the one uh, Rob was mentioning, it's one of my favorite episodes. It's called Just a Guy. So... Sonic calls everyone to go fight Eggman, and Knuckles is just like, no, I, I got a thing to do. I, I, I can't go. I'm with Mike. And so, so you know, Sonic races all the way over, and he's like, no, like, uh, we got to go. We got to go. You know, it's like, oh, okay. And Mike's like, oh, I'm coming too, you know. And he's like, no, no, Mike, you can't come. You're just a guy. And then everyone <gasps> gasps like he said the most racist thing ever. And then it goes into the full 24-hour news cycle of reporting on Sonic saying, just a guy. Then it doesn't end there. Sonic then has to go to sensitivity training, which is run by Amy. And, uh, and so, you know, Sonic eventually relents and brings Mike to a battle. And then Mike gets hit by something, gets hurt, and everyone jumps on Sonic saying, why did you bring him to the battle? He's just a guy. And Sonic's just like, well, I can't do anything. I quit. <laughs> this show, I've been baffled by how well it's been written and the only thing I can attribute it to is lack of oversight. Sometimes when you let writers off the chain, it just lets loose and it's absolutely amazing. That's been my adult secret shame too. What's your childhood one though? Sailor Moon without a doubt because <laughs> here's the thing, a lot of pe people are applying now but take yourself back to the 90s. Take You're yourself back to the 90s and be a boy. You, you, oh, you watch Sailor Moon? Ugh, that's for girls. Ugh. So it's like I would come home at lunch, watch the show in secret, go home, go back to school, and everyone's like, oh, what'd you watch? Nothing. My mom had the TV. Pa I couldn't Power watch Rangers, anything. It was Power Rangers. Power Rangers. It was Power Rangers. Of course it was Power Rangers. I wasn't watching anything with school girls and magical transformations. But I don't want to be a princess. <laughs> but, but Sailor Mercury, Mercury, how could you, how could you not? not? It, oh, exactly. <laughs> and to those of you who have been coming here for years, my first cosplay at the first... Ketacon ever was Tuxedo Mask. And that yes. is where I met this lovely man. That's how me and Rob actually met. We met at Ketacon itself. Uh, I only knew Rob for the first three years as Tuxedo Mask. I actually didn't know his name. And for most people, they only knew me as rather Mako or Loki for a very long time. Some people still only know me as Mako and Loki, but I'm okay with that. Now, my secret childhood shame is one step worse because, well, Ooh. when Sailor Moon was successful, they decided to adapt a couple of other things, and there's one of them I really liked. It was called Princess Guinevere and the Jewel Riders. <laughs> also known as Princess Starla. Um, it is... You, you, yeah, you have to take Sailor Moon, you set it in a magical kingdom, add furries, and then make it 20 times girlier. However, it was such a fun adventure show. Granted, I don't know. I watched it when I was like eight, and I absolutely loved it, but I would never admit it to anyone. Granted, I had the benefit of having an older sister, so I had cover of when she's watching stuff, and I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing anything. I'm not supposed to know what's watching. It's like all these new like kids' shows are coming out. My, my niece is watching them, and she's six, and I'm like, I love this show. But, this is so, uh, you know, no, no, I, I, I know that show because my niece, totally. <laughs> no, I don't watch it in my spare time. What are talking about? Oh, no, no. I have no shame right now about oh. the state of animation that's been out there. The quality of cartoons that has come out in the past few years has rivaled anything before it. Um, Steven I mean, Universe for one. Steven Universe for Rick one. It is Rick and Morty. Morty. Well, I don't think that that's definitely not a kids show though. No, but but it's speaking of amazing. Steven Universe, who wants an autograph picture of the Thunder Geeks' gems? Come on. And <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll we'll do that. We'll do that after the show. But uh, with the cartoons that have come out, because I mean, we've had a lot of great cartoons over the, uh, over the years. I mean, the 90s used to be looked at one of those golden ages. We had things like Batman the Animated Series. We had Animaniacs. Some of the cartoons that have come out now 
are not just for kids anymore. They are telling a much deeper story beyond anything you could ever expect it because kids uh, animation's always been sort of the ghetto of entertainment where, oh, I mean, it's just for kids. We don't have to pay attention to it. I mean, eh, just slap DreamWorks on it and we'll be good to go. But what we have now, I, I cannot rec uh, recommend more. Uh, Steven Universe, Rick and Morty. Adventure uh, Time. Adventure right? Time. That's Gravity been, Falls. Gravity Falls. We had a Dipper and Mabel here earlier. Oh, uh, and they were absolutely amazing. You should go high five them because I absolutely support Gravity Falls. Let's let's talk. We even talk a little about nostalgia here. So maybe we should talk more about nostalgia. What do you so, have in mind? Now, one thing uh, I know it's close and dear to Rob's heart, and I had to include this for it was Power Rangers. Uh, anyone who knows Rob knows he's absolutely obsessed with Power Rangers. As you can see by the purchase I have just made. <laughs> what is that? Yes. What is that? R Rob decided to buy a giant White. replica of the White Ranger weapon Saba, his talking sword. Because, I mean, as a child, it wasn't only a sword, it was a talking sword. Okay. And not only that, but Tommy is the best ranger. No debate, no hands. No. But I thought you had this already. No, I've got the dragon dagger. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which was his weapon when he was the green ranger, but then he went to white, then he went to red, then he went to red again, then he was the black ranger, and then he came back for the fifth. He Funniest. was trans-rangerist. <laughs> sure. He has quite an expansive <laughs> resume as a ranger. He is the power ranger. He's not just a power ranger, he's the power ranger. So, my question, though, is... What about the other ones? Because with anything, there's always a clone that comes with it. Now, I had a few. Uh, my favorite probably as a kid, and I can barely remember it, was Mystic Knights of Tiranog. It was Fox Kids' first attempt at doing a Sentai, and they said it in old Ireland. Oh, yeah, I just saw some lights click on. It was like, oh, yeah, that show. Mystic Knights. I, I do not have a VCR. I you, got a you VCR. Have a oh, oh, I have a VCR. We'll, we'll definitely be talking about that more in a future episode, though. So, now, there were quite a few other ones. I think probably the worst one was Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters from Beverly Hills. And yes, that is its actual title. I would have title. probably liked that. It sounds like something I would like. That sounds amazing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tattooed teens? Come on. That sounds like something I'd be They're not only tattooed teens. They're tattooed teens from Beverly Hills. So you know who, who are aliens. Who are also aliens. Was it like, like totally, totally spies, spies from, from Beverly, Beverly Hills, Hills too? too? Probably. I think Totally that Spies is Beverly, Beverly Hills, Hills too. too. Totally Spies, a.k.a. Rule 34, the show. When you were talking yeah, about the old ones, the one, one that, came that came to my mind right away was, was uh, Knights, Knights of the Zodiac. Zodiac. Oh, Say yes. Say Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely love that, that show. show. And, and the, the theme, theme song. song. Where they use Flock of Seagulls just randomly. I'm still confused about that. Why? And, uh, <laughs> Admit it, you love it. I do. Now, there, there's the one that I, I know I loved as a kid. It is impossible to go back to. It is honestly, going back to it, one of the worst TV shows, and I feel bad for every parent I subject it to. Big Bad Beetleborgs. <laughs> Blasphemy! <laughs> I've gone Not back and rewatched it on Netflix, and I love it. Shenanigans, Come on, sir. Flabber is amazing. Fla Jay Leno as a ghost was not amazing. A ghost wizard. A go Jay Leno as a ghost wizard. There is letting the writers off the hook, and then there's giving the writers LSD before they write a television show. Oh, come on. And not only that, but the theme was amazing. It was just Big Bad Beetleborgs over and over. That was almost as bad as like the Dragon Ball opening we had. Oh, come on. Hey, rock the Dragon. You rock. Rock, rock the Dragon. No, 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 no. Not Rock the Dragon. That was the one the Americans get. We got Dragon, Dragon, Dragon Ball. Ball. Dragon, Dragon Ball Z. That's it. We didn't even get the good bad opening. We got the bad, bad opening. We had like a like good, a good guitar, guitar solo in ours, though. though. Like that like solid that yeah. in the middle. Like, like, come on. on. Okay, okay. Well, one that's objectively bad would be the second Dragon Ball opening we got. Because we had the original 13-episode run that had that amazing theme song. And then they did, YTV decided to do the entire episode. And it seemed they did the opening in, like, really, really early Adobe After Effects. But just, like, spinning Dragon Balls. and. Andrew, I think we got a question over here. Oh, we got a question. Fire away, sir. You feel on the spot now, don't you? We're just going to stare at you judgingly. <laughs> 
It's okay, man. It's okay. Everybody it's okay. Socially no, no, no. Awkward. Everybody we here. We are all awkward. geeks here. We are all have our socially awkward moments. So, so fire away. Do you have a question? No, no. F fire away. Fire away. I will give you watermelon Jolly Ranchers. In fact. Oh, don't worry. Okay, just ask, just ask your question. I'll, I'll repeat it back. So, what's your question? This is actually on 102.7 FM, C-I-L-U. Yes, we're right behind us here. We are not, uh, we are not broadcasting live today. We're, we're not broadcasting live today. We're actually we're doing our pre-record today. We're going to broadcast it live on Sunday, uh, 10.30 on Sundays. So you guys can tune in and even hear yourselves, and you'll be like, oh, my God, that's me screaming in the background. Yes. <laughs> well, then why are you talking so we can hear you on the radio? Ooh. Paradox. That's me and Rob. Here's the thing. Here's the weird thing about people's voices, and it's something we had to get used to as well, because when you hear your own voice, you hear what's inside of your head, and you think it's so much deeper and manlier and Sexy. so confident. I thought I sounded like a dignified like Japanese woman, like, oh, you know, so sexy. But and no, I do not. I do oh. not sound like that cool, okay? And then you go on the radio, you're seven, like, hi, guys, how is it going? And you're like, oh, my God, I sound 12. What the heck? I like big comfy couch and beetle horns. <laughs> That's why Andrew's even got his radio voice. If you talk... The so thing is, with Andrew, if you talk to him outside of here... He's got his booming radio voice right, right now, and all when we're on the air. And when you talk to Andrew in real life, he's like, "Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, girl?" <laughs> Absolutely, Absolutely true. true. <laughs> <laughs> Love Andrew how you can't deny dying. that. Andrew is dying. Technically true. But what it speaks to is a lot of us have that self-consciousness about ourselves. But the thing is, that's where something like a convention really brings us together, where we get to meet other people where, I mean, yeah, a lot of us were bullied as kids. A lot of us were socially awkward. A lot of us are still really socially awkward. And we put on a confident face in front of everyone staring at you and judging you slowly. Or kitty and, ears. And kitty ears. But what you have to realize is that everyone here is here to love the same things, too. And everyone here is here to have a good time. And it's one of those things with it only happens at a convention where we've made things and opportunities. Oh, I'm getting all sentimental and Kyle's getting all, oh, yeah. <laughs> For those people who only get to hear the show and not see it, oh, yeah. be lucky. So that... that <laughs> So my question is then is to to Kyle, yeah. what was your favorite Legend of Zelda? Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, you gotta pick one. Here is the problem. You haven't played Legend of no, Zelda. No, 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 no. I, don't I don't like, like Zelda. Zelda. Oh. What? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I want a reason I like, why. I like, I like two, two games, games out of the out series. series. I like a Link to the Past. past. Mm -hmm. I, like I like a Link Between, between Worlds. worlds. Yes. It's the, the same, same game. game. But. but as for Ocarina, Ocarina of Time, time and, all and all of that, of that you never got into 3D Zeldas? No, it's no, absolutely, absolutely overhyped. Right. Uh, well, it is like, like one, one of the worst control games, games I've ever played, played in my life. Ooh. That is, I wait, wait. Say have you played any of the other 2D Zeldas? I mean, have you tried to like Minish Cap? I even I played, played Zelda, Zelda too. too. And you do? Oh, wow. <laughs> and that was, that was awful. awful. For well, many of us. for me, my favorite has to go back to being A Link to the Past. It was my very first Zelda. I played it way back on my uh, Super Nintendo, and I sunk more time into that game. And this was, like, very early internet before, like, game facts was really a thing. So you'd go find random websites, and then you'd print out the map piece by piece while playing the game so you could try to figure out where the heck you're going. Oh... Now, I think it's, that's one thing that's better now, I think, with video games is you can never get stuck on a game for, like, two years before you finally go but, back to it and figure it out. But, see, that's the problem I find is there's no more challenge. You can just Google what you need to know. Uh, most there's of no the games just, just tell, tell you, you where, where to go. To go. <laughs> yeah, there's no, like, I honestly like getting stuck and lost and going, okay, okay, think, backpedal, figure this out. Actually, there's one game I want to talk about because you're the one who saved our butts in it. Ooh. Years ago when PS3 came out, me and my buddy bought the PS3 just for one game called Heavenly uh. Sword. We made it all the way to the final boss. For a few days, we constantly tried to beat this boss. We could not do it. We could not do it. Kyle comes over one day. 
and all we hear from the other room is, guys, you beat your game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we sir. Run, and it's like, what? And I don't, I don't own, own a PS3. PS3. So, uh, Megan, what about you? Uh, do you have a love of Legend of Zelda? I do, and for many of us, Link is like probably our first husbando. So, shame <laughs> on you, Kyle. Shame on you. Wait, wait, wait. Nope. What is a Link at least? At, is Link at least hot? Whoa, 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 ladies, 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 settle, settle down. We do not need a fight to break out here in the panel room over Link because I'm sorry, but he's married to me. <laughs> Cat fight! Everyone settle down. Everyone settle. <gasps> Take a deep Ultimate breath. Wrestling? So Rob, what about you, Rob? What would you say would be your favorite Legend of Zelda? You, you do? Okay, I'm going to get a lot of boo. I know, coming. I know. I'm putting you on the spot here. I haven't played any, and I've started like 10 minutes of, which one do I have on the N64 again? You have, I believe, Link, uh, Ocarina of Time. Yeah, so I played about 10 minutes of that, and my... N64 keeps swanking out, so I just haven't picked it up since. So that's going to be our future quest. So we've been trying to make uh, resolutions of things we should do. So me and you, I think we're going to have to go through a Zelda game sometime. Fine, but then you and me are going to have to go through Ruby. Oh, jeez. This guy refuses to watch Ruby. Come on. Can, can... I, haven't I haven't watched, watched Ruby, Ruby either. either. I refuse I to watch, watch Ruby, Ruby too. too. I Me too, actually. I, I like the characters. I like that they are aesthetically pleasing, but I'm just not into 3D animation. Sorry. Okay, no, here's my problem. He, I can explain my problem with Ruby. Now, Rob's explained to me the issue before with, you know, low staff, independent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, to preface, I don't care. I care about the finished product only. Now, Monty Ohm, rest in peace amazing at doing action scenes. The action scenes in Ruby that I've seen looked absolutely stunning. They were really well uh, choreographed. They're a, a joy to watch. The problem is everything in between where you get that uncanny valley during every conversation and it pulls me right out of the show where I'm it's just like, hello, I'm Ruby. And the inexperience of it shows for me, and I have a hard time getting into it. Hey, I watched two and a half seasons of Turtles because you recommended it. I didn't like it in the end. Feel free to boo. But I didn't like it. But I gave it a try. Now, now let's point out, Rob, why don't you like it? Because I call shenanigans on your reason. Just because everyone's way too young. The turtles. That's not the reason you gave me. It's because you didn't like their version of April because you can't bone her. <laughs> And Casey. <laughs> and Casey. I haven't watched, I haven't watched it either. either. You've recommended, recommended me so, me many, so times. many times. It's so good. I've talked about it a few times in here. Uh, the new Ninja Turtles is an amazing show. They take every uh, they take the best elements of every Ninja Turtles and combine it together. It is better than the 80s series. It is the best incarnation I feel they have done to date. I see a couple hands up again. We see um, a couple hands up again. Yeah. Fire your question, sir. To be talking about like bad animation shows. So, yes. What's your take on reboot then? Ooh, I don't like reboot. Okay, I don't like reboot. I don't like reboot, but I've had now seen the, the new reboot. reboot I've seen some stuff. I will believe a new reboot is coming when I see an episode. Because reboot. They confirmed the name online. I know they confirmed the name. However, the hey, reboot actually has a long history of saying we're making a new show. Uh, a couple years ago, they actually had planned this huge relaunch, and they had, uh, were planning to pick it up right from where they left off and not just do a reboot. They actually had uh, done an online comic to continue the story after Megan Bond take over. Unfortunately not. This one's going to be a full reboot. Now, that was, I believe, in 2003, and we've had about five announcements since then. That mainframe is totally going to stop making Barbie movies and is going to start making the uh, making reboot again. So... When it comes to the older reboot, though, I do keep in mind of time frame. Reboot, at its time when it came out, was an absolutely groundbreaking in 3D animation. Groundbreaking. And because we do it per show, name drop. Metal oh, Creators. come on. <laughs> oh. Even though it's a live show, I shall be the name dropper. So, Rob has this thing where every show, we try to go the entire show without talking about someone Rob has met yet. And unfortunately, we have not succeeded for a single episode. Little boy, uh, little dude in the back. You see, you have a question there. Let, yell out loud for us. Uh, I love Ninja Turtles too. We all awesome. love Ninja Turtles. We all love, we love Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Turtles. Who's Al, your in the back, fire oh. away your question. 
What does reboot mean? Oh, it's a computer term. Uh, reboot was a television show in the 90s where it essentially took place inside of a an computer. anthropomorphized version of a computer. So a lot of the residents were ones and zeros, the binomes. And then you had uh, special oper uh, you know, operations like Dot Matrix. Yeah, you had Gar uh, the Guardian Bob, who was essentially an antivirus. And then you had Enzo, which was absolutely nothing and literally thrown in there because the... Uh, the executive, when they were doing the show, said you had to have something for the kids. You had to have a little kid in there to relate to, just some little Enzo. So they're like, okay, we're naming him. We're throwing this little kid in there. And so, and who had the best character development? Which had the his best character development for a character created out of spite? <laughs> Honestly, I, I gotta say, when Enzo lost his eye as a kid, because they actually showed that bloody scene where he's holding his bloody face. It was one of those shows that decided to push the envelope beyond what like animation had done at that point. Most cartoons had been very episodic. It had always been very self-contained. A reboot started like that, where it was just... You the had, first season is just that. Yeah, it's you have the monster of the day, the video game comes down, they go into the game, they defeat the, you know, they defeat the user... They win, don't get destroyed. I got to ask you a question. When I was a kid and started watching this show, whenever I would play a video game, I would always pause near winning because I would be terrified of killing little virtual reality people because when they lose the game in the show, it would destroy a piece of the, of the world. I have to wonder how many kids also thought that and intentionally lost all their games so they didn't break the computer. Or when the computer broke, they're like, damn, it was me. I, I hurt them. No! You guys are so easily influenced. Tis, tis, tis. What was the... the says, says the girl who screams every time I just go, boo. There was that's, the whole... That's like, fear, uh, not influence. That's different. That I've influenced fear. you to be afraid of me. You guys got to remember, remember, too, there was, there was like, the, like whole the whole gamer movie, movie later, later on that was like, like you, you die in the game, game you die, die in real life. life. Oh, Stay Alive. Was that Stay that's Alive? Yeah. Uh, yes. No, no. Yes, yes, it was, was Stay Alive. I watched it in theaters, actually. really liked that movie. Nobody likes it, but I do, because I like weird... Stuff that nobody likes. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So I just want to take a second here because uh, theoretically we're going to throw it to a commercial break. And just remember, this is brought to you by 102.7 FM, CILU, or around the world at LU Radio. Okay, so let's talk more nostalgia here. So uh, what I want is what is your earliest movie memory? What's like the earliest movie you remember watching? Ladies first. Oh, Ladies first. Uh, so mine is probably, it's probably Disney movies. I mean, I was brought up on like Aladdin and uh, Thumbelina, which was actually Don Bluth film. Um, and I was brought up also on, uh, yeah. That's we the actually had that's an argument about Thumbelina earlier. Yeah. These guys don't think Thumbelina was a good movie. And they don't lump me in with him. I okay, think okay. it's a great movie. I love Don Bluth. I absolutely love it. Thumbelina wasn't a good one of his it's because movies. It's it, it, listen, okay, Thumbelina is about, uh, it's, it's, it's a journey about a girl who wants to find her husband, her fiancé. I can see why you don't think it's a good movie, okay, because a lot of Don Bluth's films, they are usually about a journey, but they don't focus on the love story no, so much. No, they focus much. on making you cry and feel miserable. The thing about Don Bluth is he wasn't afraid to scare kids, and that's what makes his movies so great. We he need more animators like him. Well, when I take Thumbelina, and then I uh, stack it up against uh, movies like The Land Before Time, All Dogs Go to Heaven. Fievel Goes West. Fievel, uh, Fie yeah, American Tale and Fievel Goes West. I look at Thumbelina and I'm like, mm, you know. It's, it's the same reason we'll find um, a lot of people are kind of met on Disney with Princess and the Frog. I thought Princess, I and, the Frog, Princess and the Frog too. It That's was my great. favorite song, song in, it. in it. I know. However, there is a lot of downplay to it because uh, it was an okay Disney movie, but it didn't have that groundbreaking, you know, musical number that really pushed a lot of the things in the Disney Resident. Almost songs there was into such a good one. song. Almost it was an amazing. Was oh yeah, no, and song. other side. Friends I'm not on the on other, other side. side. And on the other side, Doctor Facilier is the best Disney villain. Well, yeah, because it's Goliath. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the voice of Goliath from Disney's Gargoyles is also the villain in this movie. Yeah, it's yeah. learning new things on Thunder. IMDb, Beats. man, IMDb. I <laughs> the voice is like that deep, brooding, just, just sensual voice. If I could date a voice, it would be his voice. <laughs> I still have to go. I, we talked about this previously, but uh, 
I still have to go with Riker slash Xanatos from Gargoyles. That was the voice that makes me quiver. Um, that man built a castle in the sky just because, like, I'm rich. I'm going to put a castle on top of my skyscraper because I want to see if these gargoyle things come to life. <laughs> I could just imagine Riker in the holodeck doing that one day. So, Kyle, what about you? What's your earliest movie memory? Honestly, Honestly I can, I say, can with say with, with, with 100%, 100% certainty, certainty child's child play. play. Really? Now, how did Absolutely. that happen? Uh, uh, during, during my, my younger, younger years, years and, and my babysitter, my babysitter loved... loved my, well, my, my sister, sister. was uh, <laughs> super, super obsessed, obsessed with, with horror, horror movies, movies. And, and I remember walking, walking out of my room, room and, and there was Chucky, Chucky in full screen in front of me, and, and I was like, like nope. Oh, jeez. <laughs> now, I think my earliest memory was probably from a movie theater, and I believe it was actually the Robin Williams hook. I distinctly remember that, because I distinctly remember having to pee halfway through it and leaving the theater, and then remembering parts of the movie that I missed. (laughs) Pretty much, I remember, that's that's distinctly what I remember. I remember that it was during the big pirate scene, I'm like, okay, I gotta go, because I want to stay because this was amazing, and then I came back and I was really lost. Rob, what about you? What do you think was your earliest movie memory? I can remember it distinctly. It was um, my sister rented this uh, video for us to watch, and I don't remember watching the beginning of the movie, but I remember this one scene. You might have heard of this movie, a little one called Jurassic Park. Oh, jeez. It's the part with the T-Rex where it's just boom, boom, boom. boom. And then all of a sudden this goalie just hits the back of their Jeep, and you just see it like screeching down with all the blood. As a five-year-old kid, I wet myself. That was scary. <laughs> no, you got to give it to Spielberg. That, the suspense in that movie building up to the T-Rex. <sighs> now, I know me, Rob, and Kyle, we've incidentally given our earliest scare. So, Megan, I'm curious for you, what is the earliest media thing you remember being terrified of? Um, so when I was younger, I had a bad reaction to Red Dye Number 7 <laughs> in M&M's. That, okay. That's not a movie. <laughs> no, but listen, listen, okay. Okay, okay. And I had watched Beauty and the Beast plenty before, and I was totally fine with it. I was like, yeah, look, puppies, you know, they're gonna eat her, whatever. Okay, cool, but then when I had these M&M's with the red dye in them, uh, then I started freaking out because I had these really bad, scary, like, visions of this these these wolves trying to eat Belle, and I just... What? <laughs> Those weren't M&M's. Your sister just gave you acid. Yeah, no. <laughs> Considering she would have only been probably seven at the time, I really want to know where she got it from. The theater? <laughs> <laughs> this is Thunder Bay. You just walk up to anyone and say, hey, you got any acid? Cool. I'm going to go drug my sister. That was probably the earliest one I had, but I don't actually remember it. I, all I remember is my mom telling me about it. Now, the one that really screwed me up was um, I was at my first slumber party, and it was my first horror movie I actually watched, and it was Scream 2. And I cried for my mommy to come get me and bring me home. <laughs> now, for me, I have one more that's a little more embarrassing. It's not a movie, though. There is something that I was terrified of as a child. I don't know why. I'm To this day, I've been trying to figure it out. The game, the board game Operation. What? I'm dead serious. When the buzzer touched the side and the nose went off, I don't know why I was terrified of it. I would start bawling <laughs> just because I was terrified this man in the thing was getting hurt. You hurt <laughs> And my family was mean and really liked to play the game to watch me start screaming in terror (laughs) at it. (laughs) So I've given mine. I'm curious. What's your most embarrassing childhood secret then? Oh, a childhood moment. Something you're willing to give. Embarrassing Embarrassing childhood childhood moments. moments. Um, Um, I can... kind of go with it, it, but uh, uh, when I was a very very young young age, age, uh, uh, being being in in a smaller smaller town, town, Southern Southern Ontario, Ontario, it was was like like super snowy, snowy, and I was like, like, I'm going to go in the snow naked. (laughs) 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 And 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 my mother was like, no, no, you're not. And I'm like, and I stripped and walked outside, I'm like, I'm going. And then I touched the snow, and it was like, nope. Suddenly you make so much more sense now. Right? Yeah, my, my mom was just like, uh, it was back in 1996, I believe, when you had this huge snowstorm. I really want to go outside. She was just like, okay. 
And I make it about three steps out there. So I'm, you know, I think about eight at that time. So the snow is coming up to my chest here. And it's like, oh, I want to go back inside now. I was like, are you sure? I mean, we got you all dressed. Do you, you want to come back? And then, yes, please. So, Rob, what about you? Most embarrassing childhood moment. My most embarrassing, I, honestly, since I feel no shame. That's true. Very true. That is very true. But I will tell one of my favorite stories because it's not so much shame, it's ha ha, Rob. I like ha ha, Rob. So when I was a kid, my sister used to ha have parties and lock me in the basement. Perfect. Perfect. We're off to it a was start. a big basement, so it's okay. But because I'm me, I learn how to pick locks really quickly. So one day while my sister's having a party, I pick the lock. And at the top of the stairs is someone called Jim. And he looks at me and goes, hi, Rob. <laughs> and butts me down a flight of stairs. <laughs> the, here's the twist to the story. That man is my boss. I now work for him for Eat Local Pizza. Oh, jeez. Wow. wow. So wow. anytime he's like, hey, Rob, can you work late? I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, come on, do it for me. I'm like, you had butted me down stairs. I owe you nothing. Megan, what about you? Most embarrassing childhood moment? When I was about four, okay, I woke up from a nap one day and I was walking around my mom's room. I remember this, okay, and I found a luggage, a piece of luggage, and it had one of those tiny little keys on it. And I looked at it and then I looked at the outlet and I was like, hey, that fits. And I put the key in the socket and I don't remember what happened next. <laughs> All I know is uh, the next memory I have is my hand was black and I was screaming and crying. <laughs> and uh, whenever I tell anyone that story, they go, that explains a lot. I was <laughs> just about to say yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jenna. Aww. So, so we went with embarrassing. Now let's go with love here now. All of us, our, our geekdom always starts with something. There's something that really sparks that interest where you, it, it's, you become absolutely fi fixated and focused and you absolutely start to love it. I said absolutely quite a bit there. What absolutely. was, Rob, what was your very first geekdom? Big shock, Power Rangers. Wow, really? Really? Yeah. My God. Now why? Why when you were a kid, why were you attracted to Power Rangers? Well, actually, here's the thing. When it was just like the first few episodes where it's just like monsters fighting, it's like, all right, this is cool. It was with the introduction of Tommy that this show became great because a lot of people don't know me from way back when, but when I was a kid, I was a jerk. I would pick fights with anyone for any reason. I bit, I scratched, I swore. I was the worst kid ever. But... What? <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That still sounds like Kurt Rob. Trust me, I was a lot worse. Like juvenile delinquent bad. Yeah, no, no, no. I just enjoy it now. Yeah. The thing is, like, then Tommy came along and he was turned into the villain, but he redeemed himself, got good, and became one of the main Power Rangers. And Tommy's story of redemption to me actually struck a big chord. It's like, if he can be forgiven and he was pretty much destroying the world, I still have a chance to be a good person. And yeah, I may be a sarcastic person here and there, but it's like, I don't think I'm evil. <laughs> okay, fine, I'm always sarcastic. <laughs> Thank you. But Thank the you. point is, I'm not going around kicking people in the face if they look at me funny. Hey, so. I just, I just <laughs> hug you and lick you, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. Megan, what about you? What do you think was your very first geekdom? It was probably Digimon. I mean, I liked Pokemon, Ooh. but uh, I, I, I really liked Digimon because I had a little bit of a crush on Izzy Izumi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, I, I was just really intrigued by this story of like these kids. It was more about the kids, not just the monsters. I mean, I can name every single Pokemon probably if you gave me like a piece of paper in like an hour. But <laughs> um, the story about the kids was so much more engaging for me because that's what that's my personality. I'm I'm intrigued by stories about people, not so much about action. You know. I was all about, about Sora. Sora. All, All about, about that Sora. Sora. <laughs> I don't blame you. She was like a tomboy. She was strong. Oh, and yeah. That I was one thing that was really good about Digimon, and I think that's why it resonated with so many kids, is because it 
it was more than just the regular stereotypes. You had a bigger diversity. So, I mean, you still had your tomboy, your nerd, your... Girly girl. Girly girl. But the way they played them is they played them then more than just their stereotype. And they then always, they evolved. They always learned, they growed, and yes, they digivolved. They grew, they grew with, with them. them. <laughs> also, Gomamon was the best thing ever. I have to agree. Gomamon was pretty awesome. I was all I was about, about like, Gomamon God, God, and Wart like, like when, when he started digivolving and it just turned straight awesome. Okay, okay. Notice my sarcasm. Notice Gomamon. You see a... I, I gotta, I gotta go with Gomamon. Uh, I, gotta I gotta say, gotta say man, man. Like marching, marching fishes. fishes will it's munching be. fishes. What? Munching fishes. <laughs> was I, it really? It was munching fishes. I just rewatched uh, the series. Oh wow! I, I never do that. I think my favorite was Padmon. Definitely, he had little wings and his little voice was so cute. Ah, he was like little pudgy guy. Ah. So, what about you, Kyle? What would you say your very first fandom? Metabots. Metabots? Yes, yes. Metabots, Metabots. 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 everything. And, and the, the site, site that they had online, had online where, where you could customize, build, build and, and use your own Metabots, Metabots against other people. other people. I, what? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, was it was there, there for years. years. <laughs> yeah. I remember Metabots, too. I, I, I liked it, but, like, I, I liked it, and then I um, collected all the little coins. Yeah. But I literally didn't, like, I didn't watch it religiously. I did. <laughs> so I didn't know what any of them were. Oh, and another question for you? Shout it, man! Shout it. Shout it loud and proud. Awesome. Nice. We love Greymon, too. Woo! Dinosaurs, dinosaurs rule. Dinosaurs yeah, okay. rule. So, uh, I'm trying to think what was mine. I had one in my head, and I got distracted by Digimon there. It's all about the Mega Tokyo for you, isn't it? No, no, that wasn't my first fandom. I had lots of fandoms before that. Um, if I have to go earliest, I'm probably going to have to go with Pokemon, because that's the first sh uh, That's the first thing that I remember early internet even getting into roleplay with, which is a bit embarrassing to admit. However, I absolutely loved Pokemon as a kid. Me and my sister, we memorized every single Digirap, and not because Poke we Poke Rap! Oh, Poke Rap. Oh, see, my, my mind's still on Digimon now. I'm just like, oh yeah, I gotta watch that now. Let, let me ask you this. Because Pokemon was your first fandom, did you try moving the truck? I Everyone tried moving that truck. Everyone hates that truck. That truck is evil, and to this day, no one really knows why they put it in there. It was just kind of left over. But you cannot move the truck. How you just got to do it 540 times in a row. Now, I'm curious. What is the most absurd Pokemon hack that you heard? I don't know. Um, I always remember just the missing number one, and if you the first letter of your name af affected what you're going to see when he pops but th up. But that one was true. What is the, the worst fake one that you heard? Because we all had those fake... For, for those of us in the playground, we would all have, this is the way that you get Mew, or Pika Blue, or uh, like a bunch of other ones that were made up uh, back in the red and Professor blue. How to fight Professor Oak. How to fight Professor Oak. Now, do you remember how you could do it? Uh, the rumor was if you catch all 151, mm -hmm. then you fight Oak. And he would have a special Pokemon that's not available. Now, Megan, uh, do you have any... Did, did you play Pokemon? Did you have any absurd uh, hacks that were... Uh, I just played Emerald, honestly. That's the only Pokemon game I've ever played was Pokemon Emerald. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I haven't even really heard of any hacks or anything. I mean, that, it was my, it was very much a thing within the uh, red, blue, and then gold and silver generations where you would have these absurd, elaborate uh, things that were they were you were supposed to do. Um, mine was probably uh, was how to get Pika Blue. Now, interesting story about Pika Blue because it obviously it went on to be Meryl. However, it was called Pika Blue for a while and. There was also Flare Chew and all of these other made-up ones. That comes from the demo from Gold and Silver at one of the earlier Tokyo game shows. They had a bunch of spl uh, placeholder sprites for because uh, they didn't actually have the monsters developed. One of them was Meryl, and then they had a bunch of other ones. The one that we do usually see the sprite for Flare Chew was actually one of those placeholder sprites. But 
if you remember, in Cerulean City, you would use the item finder around one of the houses, and it would go off. However, you would never find the item. It seemed to have been glitched. So what I was told is you had to walk every step in the game, catch all 151 Pokemon, and then go use the item finder 151 times, which you would find a Pokeball that contains Pika Blue. Yeah. What? And I tried. You poor, poor soul. soul. I know. Dude, I, I get it. When I was a kid, I printed out all 151 like Pokedex int- entries from online, had them taped on my wall, and it would tell you where each and every single Pokemon is. Ooh. And the thing is, like, I had this, like, because this was not small, these were, like, a good 20 pages pasted on my wall, taking up everything. And I'll be playing my Game Boy just staring at this wall intensely. Like, all right, go a little here, go in this area, and... The days before, like, internet being a stable thing, because it's not like you just Googling that, because you had dial-up. You have 10 minutes before your parents kick you off. You need to use the phone. phone. Yeah, much. I remember those AOL days. But however, you kept getting those free trial discs, so you could have, like, an internet for a year just off what they sent you in the mail. I had a lot of free internet as a kid. I just used them as Frisbees. That's what they ended up becoming after a while. I just remember doing that as well, playing Frisbee with the AOL discs. That turned into, into the, uh, the, uh, the PlayStation, PlayStation demo, demo discs, discs that, that came, came with the, the, the magazines. Yeah. That's what turned, turned into, into the Frisbees, frisbees for, me. for me. There's actually, there's, I have one that I wish I still had because uh, I'm trying to remember the game. Uh, it had, I believe it was an Evil Dead game, and it was never released. However, the only version of it out was on one of those PlayStation magazine discs, and that's one of the few ones I bought. I don't remember why. I think it had some information about Kingdom Hearts 2 in it, that is the only demo it ever had, and I never knew, and I remember throwing it out. I know. We have some more questions out there, Andrew. We got one from over here, from Sebastian. <laughs> okay, well, hearing all about all this awesome old stuff from my childhood, like the Gargoyles, Pokemon, Digimon, I just have to ask if you guys remember Samurai Pizza Cats. Oh, I God, absolutely no. do. Good, Good God. God. <laughs> The Pizza Cats are samurai, and I'd like to note, their antics take our breaths away and leave fur balls in our throat. We kittens are a special breed. We never call retreat. And whenever Big Cheese knocks us down, we land upon our feet. Oh, pray to the L Pizza Cats, ring your little bell. And though we may be pen and ink, we'll always fight like Pizza Cats. I... Absolutely. I'm going to reframe. My very first fandom, hands down, before I knew what anime was, was Pizza Cats. I remember uh, I remember waking up early when it was in early. I remember being late to school when they moved the time slot. I loved this show. For those of you who haven't seen pizza, uh, Samurai Pizza Cats, it is one of the best examples of dubbers completely messing up the show ever. Because with Samurai Pizza Cats, it was made way, way back in the 90s. Uh, I believe it was airing on Fox Kids at the time. They were never given the scripts translated. They were given a bunch of Japanese tapes saying, make a show out of this, and they're like, oh. So instead, they're like, eh, we're going to turn into a comedy, throw our own references in there, edit it all back together, and ended up making this amazingly hilarious show that is better than the original. Now, interesting trivia about the theme song. I absolutely love the theme song for Samurai Pizza Cats. Yes. Yes. You know, that, that was the ending oath. The, the beginning one, they didn't have the singer who was supposed to show up you know, to perform it. And the producer was a little bit intoxicated, but he could sing it. So he sang the opening. They stuck with it. And there's actually a stutter he has in it where it's these cats, cat, these cats get down, down with a wild hangover. He wasn't supposed to repeat those words. He was just slurring. <laughs> the entire thing went to air while he was hammered. Oh, the 90s, when people really didn't care that much as long as the product got out. So I'm curious, do you guys have any other favorite 90s cartoons? Ooh, 90s. Oh, okay. Um, um, okay, so I really liked Digimon, and I really liked... Uh, no, wait, I guess that would be early 2000s with card captors. Uh, I think it started in 99. But okay. L- yeah, Megan's a young in here. Kyle, what about you? Let's say 90s. I'm trying to think, was Cyber 90s? 90s? 
Oh yeah. Cyber Six was Cyber 90s. Cyber Six was 90s. That, that was, was my by, by, by far, far my, my favorite. favorite. That theme, that theme song, song sticks, sticks with you for your, your life. life. The animation, the story, and honestly, everything. I think it may be, and I could be overstepping my ideas, but I think it was like the first TV example of like a transgender person. That was. Whoa, that whoa, was guys. one. Remember, we're that still was recording one thing that was really for interesting our live show for it. on Sunday. That was one thing that was really interesting for Cyber Six. Um, it was the story. I, I'm trying to remember the entire story because it was the gen- genetic modifications. I don't think they ever really ended it because it was adapted from a Brazilian comic book. Uh, but the main character uh, was a girl, but to disguise herself, her secret identity, she took on the role of a male teacher. And they actually had, and it was probably one of the first examples I can remember of, uh, like, a hinting at what would be a gay romance. Despite Cyber Six technically being female, you would see uh, the feelings develop between her and Julian, and Julian being quite confused about it. I'm trying to think, think of other, other ones, ones that, that now that you, you bring, bring it up, it up and, all and all I can, I can think, think of is either, either like, like Rocco's Rocko's Modern Life had to have had something, something or, or um, Cow and Chicken. chicken. <laughs> cow and Chicken, when they did it, it wasn't... Buffalo a- Gals! Yeah, yeah the, the Buffalo, buffalo gals. gals. That was not subtle. That was blatant. And it was only played <laughs> once in Canada. Yeah. That was a banned episode. When when Cow and Chicken did it, it wasn't a good example. Um, cause they it was a roaming gang of female bikers who broke into your house and chewed on your carpet. Feel free to see the innuendo. Yeah. Yeah. There's quite a few of those. Uh, writers <laughs> in the 90s had a lot of restrictions put on them. So what they would do to get past standards and practices, they would make really dirty jokes so they can get the ones they actually wanted to go through. The problem is is sometimes the censors didn't understand the joke. One of the most infamous examples of this was with Animaniacs, where... I know what you're talking talking about. about. Oh, you know this one. Now, they were, uh, they had the Warners investigating a, you know, I think think it was a murder uh, for the hippos. And Yakko tells Da to go, you know, go find Prince. Go finger Prince. No, go go find Prince. I got a Prince. (laughs) And she has the singer Prince. And she's like, no, 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 finger Prince. I don't think so. And it went to (laughs) air. Well, there was that, that one, one, and the, uh, the, other the other one that they, that they went through was when they, uh, they drank. You know, that, that was, was Tiny Toon Adventures. Was tiny tunes? Yes, it was, they actually had an episode where they drank, and it was, this is a weird one, because that one was specifically to tell kids not to drink, showing the effects and, you know, how bad it was when they went overboard. However, censors don't care, so they're like, they ended up banning the episode. They were having a blast, blast that, that whole episode. episode. Oh, yeah, that looked fun. <laughs> There's also a, a fun Dexter's episode that never aired, uh, Rude something. Yeah. Uh, that one actually got released by Cartoon Network. Yeah. yeah, later, like 10 years after, but it's pretty much uh, Dexter separates his rudeness, and the rude Dexter does nothing but swear, and they bleep it. It's not like, oh, they're just bleeping random words. You, you know that they're swearing, and it's just like... I'm just imagining the voice actor in the studio just, like, giving it his all. Well, you can, you definitely, can definitely tell because they'll be like, Dee you fiend. It's just like, what? It was one of those interesting things to see, like, where they would push into the 90s because it's one thing where I'm always torn on is giving creators a lot of freedom or putting sensible restrictions on them because of the creativity that comes out of that. I think John Kay of Ren and Stimpy is one of the greatest examples of that where when he's under the control of a studio, he absolutely hates it. However, the work he puts out is a lot better and that would be the original Ren and Stimpy. When he has full control over it, we get what we had on Spike TV or Ripping Friends and the quality is a lot lower. The Ripping Friends. Yeah, it's everyone that. buried that in somewhere in their mind. Thank you. Thank you for this. Mega Babies is an interesting situation. Mega Babies oh is an God, absolute. Oh God, I forgot about that. That one. That that's a good. That's a good topic. Repressed memories, and let's see what we can bring out. <laughs> Mega Babies was absolutely terrible, and it's kind of weird because the animation studio that did this has done quite a few good things and quite a few bad things. Uh, one of the more notable things they did was SWAT Cats, which they're actually trying to reboot. Unfortunately, well, yeah, they're, they're doing the. Ki- oh, they, did they fund the Kickstarter? Oh, awesome. They actually funded it. Now, here's my worry they also did Mega Babies. That was the same studio, so I'm, I'm very hesitant to see what comes out of that. Mega Babies was the 
the tail end of the gross out era of the 90s where it was, you know, boogers and guts, and that's where a lot of the humor was played, in which, I mean, I did love as a kid, then Mega Babies took it a step too far. Now, can you remember any other uh, big repressions? Well, doesn't that just... Isn't that an oxymoron? Can you remember something you repressed? <laughs> yes. Yes, you can. Just dig deep. What's something you want to forget? Last ne- weekend with you, I went in the 12-pack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that stays with you forever. Yeah, because I can't get that 12th bottle out. <laughs> <laughs> So, we're going to theoretically throw to another break here. Remember, folks, this is brought to you by 102.7 FM, CILU, or around the world at luradio.ca, live from Ketacon. Tick, 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 boom, we're back! (laughs) So, uh, one thing that I absolutely love and a few of us have gotten into is nostalgic food. Now, there's a lot of food out there that we loved as a child and is no longer around. For me, I have a very specific love of 3D Doritos and Pepsi Blue. That was my 12-year-old snack. Can I just, just like, bring up the colored ketchups, ketchups again? again? You can. The purple, purple green, green, and other... I remember those. Ketchups, ketchups that, that tasted, tasted horrible. horrible. But they were so much fun. Did you ever get like the weird colored bread, too? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, Wonder the Wonder Bread that had, like, that had like tie-dye on it? Yeah. Yeah. Now... They recently tried to bring back like Dorito 3D, but it's not the one I remember as a kid because it was this little puffed one. I have my pitch. This is my pitch to James Cameron. I was going to say Kirk Cameron. That's a very different avatar, too. Um, Frito-Lays, you have to get on this. You need to bring back Pepsi Blue and 3D Doritos and tie it into Avatar 2. It's absolutely perfect marketing, and then it'll make my childhood happy. Now, you brought up the ketchups. I never actually tried them. What did they taste like? Was it Food anything? coloring. Yeah. Just food coloring? It was, it was, it was it pure, pure food, coloring food coloring that squeezed, squeezed out, out of the bottle. bottle. It wasn't great, but what was great was Orbits. Uh, Orbits those was... Still exist. Those, still those still exist. Those still exist. Where? You can you find them at like trucks and stuff like that at fairs and stuff. stuff. There was one in the Peter Bro X not actually like two weeks ago. I'm calling shenanigans on both of you. I distinctly remember Orbits. They were disgusting. Those little ball things down your throat. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Feel free to giggle. I like balls in my mouth. (laughs) I like balls. For me, it was very a texture thing. Orbits, uh, Orbits was a drink that, as a child, you would continue to buy because it looked really cool. Because it was a clear drink, had this, all these little floaty colored balls in it. And when you drank them, it tasted like, you know, just goop going down your throat. But I like that. I'm a guy who likes bubble teas. I like the stranger textures. Okay, Again, so... Again, last weekend. <laughs> okay, so imagine Clearasil Morning Burst. Do you know what Clearasil Morning Burst looks like? Okay, imagine that as a drink. Yeah. yeah. That's essentially what it was. It was <laughs> yummy. <laughs> oh, Dunkaroos. Dunkaroos. Dunkaroos are still around, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 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 They changed Dunkaroos? I know one thing they changed, too. They changed tricks as well, and I was very mad about that. No, they made no, no. no. Little... They didn't change tricks. We just grew up. We can't see the shapes anymore. Oh, that makes me sad. His ears, ears fell, fell, too. too. I'm sure those two over there hiding in the back corner with Chelsea's kids hiding away, they can still see tricks as tricks. We can't because we're grown-ups. Oh, I just, I just see little circles now. I miss when they were elaborate shapes. Because we're grown-ups. Tricks are just for kids. I don't want to be grown-up. I want to be a geek. I think it might have been like, like, a, like a price problem. They probably had like a manufacturing problem with the shapes. They're like, yeah, I'll just make them balls, whatever. No, Perfect. no, no. It's totally it's just because we're grown-ups. <laughs> now... I got one that, it wasn't just the shows that we remember as a kid. It was the stuff in between as well. And as Canadians, we had, you know, the Concerned Parents Council. I absolutely love old PSAs that we used to watch as a kid from the 90s. Don't you put it in your mouth! No! (laughs) Don't you stuff it in your face! Oh, just stuff it in your face. That w- now, that's one of the ones where you can tell anyone's a Canadian by going up to them and just singing that first line. If they know how to respond, you know they're Canadian. So that's the secret to find out, finding out if it's an American posing as a Canadian or an actual Canadian. Just sing them. Don't put it in your mouth. The, the house, house hippo. hippo. 
The, the house hippo the, was there the whole I time, too. I wanted one. Everybody, Everybody wanted a house I would hippo. leave peanut butter on toast in corners waiting for it to come out. I have I have an even better one. I have an even better one for the people who are, might be on my age. Stay alert. Stay safe. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I love how everyone just, like, sarcastically says it's like, yeah, we know. Those rabbits were so cool. I'm sorry, but they were on a collapse. They were. I got to argue that Bert and Gert were awesome because they rode on, like, flying hoverboards. They had these, like, video watches going. And that's almost what we have now. We, we have the video watch. We have the Lexus hoverboard, but we're not quite there yet. We're not quite uh, there to keep child safety. That's going to be me and your job, Kyle. We're going to become anthropomorphic rabbits and keep children safe. Or that's going to be our arrest uh, sentence. <laughs> hey, kitties, remember, stay safe or I'll get you. <laughs> now, one that really stuck out to me was that War Amps one with Astar. I hate Astar. Astar was cocky because it, um, it was this golden robot that you'd see doing all these cool flips and tricks through these blades and gears. And then its arm gets popped off. And then Astar has to rub it in. It's like, I'm Astar. I'm a robot. I can put my arm back on. You can't. And all I'm thinking is like, is that a challenge, Astar? I will take that. I'm, I want a chainsaw arm. I'm pretty sure they had one for like lawnmowers too. If you would like catch your feet underneath it. I never there saw was a, that. There one. was a commercial for that. I guarantee. That's why when my ass, my dad asked me to lo- mow the lawn for the first time, I was like, no, 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 no absolutely no, no, not. Never. See, that just reminds me of an old Simpsons episode where Homer's like, Bart, son's gone the mower. You have tiny hands. Reach inside, and just spits <laughs> and out. It starts, starts going. going. <laughs> Oh, okay, we, we got a couple of questions here. Let's, let's throw it to the side and we'll bring it in. Do any of you guys know about, for nostalgia sake, Ronald McDonald's Adventures in McDonald Land? No, <laughs> though I know there's a lost video for those. Uh, I don't, I don't. The only thing that I ever watched from the McDonald Land media stuff was uh, I had this old VHS where they did Treasure Island with Ronald McDonald, and it was very confusing, and that was actually the only version of Treasure Island I have actually watched to date, including the Muppets. I never saw the Muppets do Treasure Island. Oh. I have only saw Ronald McDonald do Treasure Island, and I'm like, okay, that's good enough for me. That Muppets, I think you're going to get jumped for that. One of the like greatest, greatest opening, opening songs. songs. I think you're. I think he's gonna kick your butt for for saying you never saw him off of Treasure Island because his eye is just like that rage. No, no. Uh, my big exp. Um, I think the first time I saw them up is except like Sesame Street and such. The first time I really uh, watched them was a very short-lived 90s show called Muppets Tonight, where they had the Coolio Muppet, and they've never brought him back, but he was the host. Nobody remembers this anymore. Um, it was essentially a late-night variety show for the Muppets. Instead of doing the, the classic Muppet show, it was one that was updated for the 90s, and it was super cool and edgy. The thing is, I remember enjoying it quite a bit. The Muppets are awesome, and their late-night shows are amazing, and The Muppet Show is coming back to air. I am very excited for that, although I am worried about it coming back on network television because it's going to be coming back to ABC, and the problem with network television is ratings expectations are very, very high. True, but The Muppets have always kicked butt like when they teamed up with Vincent Price, which is by far the funniest Muppets Tonight episode. Yes. I, I'm sp- oh, you actually remember it. I'm so happy. Dude, it's Vincent Price. <laughs> no one, I challenge, no one is a bigger Vincent Price fan than this guy right here. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> the name his dropper has found his weakness. I, ha- s- I have, however, met his daughter, Victoria Price. Still doesn't count. That death. Counts? So that tells me only death can stop the name dropper. So I just have to go and kill every single celebrity that Rob wants to meet, and then we can have a show where Rob has met no one. That's the plan. Now. Wait. The problem with that plan is you still have to talk about a show where everyone's like current or forward. Oh, yeah. If we talk about one nostalgic thing, you give me the fuel for the fire. Wait, wait. wait. If he visits, visits the, grave, the grave, does it count? I, uh, I'll count that. If you visit if you Vincent visit Price's grave. grave, I will count that as meeting him. I will. It's gonna be the best because like you're gonna go to his, you're gonna go to his grave and you're gonna be like, Oh, oh. my God, Vincent Price! I'm so excited to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> it would be so up his, it would be so oh, okay. up his alley because you know I'm Vincent Price. <laughs> so we we got another question here. Um, this this may. 
No, no, that's okay. That's okay. Right. Just a question. Um, you know how uh, Rob was talking about his favorite? Well, I don't know if he if he said his favorite, but like one of his scenes that he liked in Jurassic Park. That made me like hold my hand up for a while and try to ask <laughs> if you if any of you guys have seen Jurassic World. We we have we have we've actually and we had, all have very different we have opinions. very different opinions on Jurassic was, was World. Was that the, was that your question? If any of us have seen Jurassic World? Oh. oh. If, if if any of you have seen Jurassic World, what do you like best? Oh, oh I have to actually like it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I will say what I like easy peasy. When the pterodactyl picks up the lady, throws the lady up, another pterodactyl comes in, he's like jump. And then that big sea dinosaur comes up and eats the pterodactyl, and the lady, it's like, that is overkill and beautiful. A lot thing of is, <laughs> now, the pterodactyl scene was really cool. Here's my problem with movies is I'm okay with movies being over-the-top, absurd, as long as they keep a consistent set of rules within the movie. Or they remember things they established earlier in the movie that would be obvious to use but not use it. Pterodactyl scene is actually one of the coolest scenes in the movie visually. The problem is, is they went through a very, very detailed uh, discussion about having these little things implanted in the back of every dinosaur's neck that could shock them and take them down. And they're just like, oh, look, a bunch of pterodactyls. They're eating people. I guess we won't shock them. They could have taken down every single one of them. And so I'm watching the movie. I'm like, why don't they stop them? No. Uh, okay, well, that's cool. That's my problem with Jurassic World is it has a lot of cool moments, but if I... With the rules they established in it, does it make sense? Now, Indominus versus T-Rex and Raptor. That was a cool fight. My problem with it is uh, Gwyneth Paltrow running beforehand with her high heels away from a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'm calling shenanigans on that one. You can run fast, but not outrun a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I say 35 miles an hour. No, 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 no. I, I object. I object. I've seen women run in heels. They are not even that high. The, she is wearing like kitten heels, okay? And I, I guarantee you, I could probably run oh. 35 miles an hour. <laughs> Maybe. Give me, a, give me some training. She, she probably wears those heels every day, so she's used to it. Ladies, if anyone has a pair of heels in Andrew's size, let's see him run. Come on. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I want to race. Then I want to race. We and you are going to race in high heels, and then we'll see who's faster. Okay, I've done it many times before. Oh, it's on. Okay, we got a question over here as well. So you guys were mentioning the Muppets. What did you guys think about the uh, newest Muppet movie? Muppets Most Wanted? Haven't seen it yet, but from the scenes I've seen, it looks hilarious. The Muppets have yet to fail in my eyes. That's actually where I am, too. I, that's a movie I keep meaning to see, and I absolutely love the first one the, they, they did. Um, the, but the, the reboot, it was one of those ones like, I was so excited to see it. I was so excited to see it. Then I didn't actually go to the theater, and then I forgot it existed. However, I, what I'll do, we're definitely going to watch it soon, and we'll, we'll let you know on the show. Uh, but I don't like Muppets. I don't like Muppets. I don't like Muppets. I don't like Muppets. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bert and Ernie are cool and stuff, but I just don't. Kermit's cool. The thing is cool. We We got a question from the Nostalgia Critic. What's your question, sir? Speaking of childhood nostalgia, have you guys grew up watching YTV? Of course. Of course. Of course. Well, to watch. I was was from the little town. Who remembers Snit? I definitely. Yes. I remember every stage of Snit. I remember when Snit was introduced as the purple bubble gum. I remember when he went away. I remember when he came back as a robot body and an alien had chewed up his gum body, and that's why he had no longer had it. That actually brings me to a question because uh, the PJs were a big part of uh, YTV that they dropped there. Do you have a favorite PJ? You, oh, do you not remember the PJs? It was PJ Jen. I don't. PJ. PJ Phil, um, they, ha- they had Sugar for a while, they had oh, Pat. Sugar yeah. had the worst, the worst voice, voice I've ever heard in my life. life. <laughs> Today is Friday, Today I hope you have your shoes on. <laughs> Thank you for that, yeah, talking, talking about, about repressed, repressed memories. memories. <laughs> hey, see so you did one. Rob, uh, do you remember the PJs? I do, I also remember some of the, uh, I remember there's one thing from YTV they always did, and to this day I regret not being part of it. Oh. Who here, by round of applause, remembers Video and Arcade Top 10? 
Yes. I would have killed to be on that show as a kid. Right. You win stuff for playing video games? You don't remember video games? Oh, I loved, I loved it. it. I absolutely, I absolutely loved, loved that. Show. Did you not want to be on I, that as a every kid? Every day. Did you send letters too? Yeah. yeah. That Nicholas Pickles, I definitely remember that. Now, here's the thing: is uh, you can you can find some of the old episodes like ripped from VHS on YouTube. When you go back to your childhood game shows and look at the prizes, you're like, huh? A dinner for two at medieval times doesn't seem that cool anymore. I beg to differ. Me. Excuse me. Yeah, no. Me and Rob are gonna go for dinner at medieval times. And we're not gonna bring you. Yeah. I, I still want to come. I just want to win something better. What's better than eating medieval times food and possibly getting in the ring and recreating that scene from Cable Guy? I need to ask. Okay, okay. talking talk about, about YTV, YTV, and it was around that time period. Did you guys ever make sidekicks? The things on the websites, they're like little. Yes, that was like the early original Mies and all that. Yeah, and you'd like have to go through adventures with them, and they grow, and you'd customize every last piece of them. I'm Loved slightly it. too old for that. I'm what? so yeah. Uh, that came out when I was like eight. eight. Yeah, no. Uh, Pre nineties. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I was like twelve. I I didn't Ooh. care. I, yeah, no. <laughs> I I I was on to I was on to bigger websites. The cool kid over here. Yeah. Like Neopets. Newgrounds? Like Neopets. Newgrounds. <laughs> Who remembers Neopets? Come on. <laughs> well, all of you let them die because they're still there. <laughs> they're dead. You, each and every one of you, killed your pets. Feel bad. That makes me a question. So I, I know a lot of people played Neopets. Uh, I, now, how about you guys? I know I played it. Rob, Ma Rob, Megan, did you ever play Neopets? I did play Neopets, but I, like. Uh, Who were your pets? Which ones ooh, did you have? Uh, I liked the cow. I had a blue cow. I liked the little bull cow thing. I don't know why, but I just did. I thought now, it was cool. I joined Neopets really, really early, and they used to have a lot of pets that were a little more unique that they had to take out for copyright reasons. Um, on my original account, I absolutely loved having Macy Gray as a Neopet. Because Neopets originally wasn't for kids, strange enough. It was actually for bored college students, and you needed an invite to get in. But if you knew people on the internet, you could start playing it before they opened it up to everyone. It was a really, really rudimentary site at first, and they actually had this ongoing story with levels that went up and down. So you could actually have negative levels for their theoretical battle dome if you were evil. I can actually yeah, I can still, still remember, remember my first Neopet. Neopet. It was, it was the, the, the kangaroo. kangaroo. Like, Rue? I think, Ooh. I think it was it just, just Rue. That thing made me so sad. Yeah. It had such a sad face. It was, it was depressing. It was so, it was so depressing, depressing, but it was, it was my baby. baby. I would always get one of those weird paintbrushes and make mine zombies. Yep. I was a gory kid even as a kid. And I Blood, spent guts. So many hours, hours on the doubloon game, game that you'd have to, like, scoot around on the little boat. Oh, no. For me, it was the... um. The puzzle one where you got like match the colors and like br break the tower. No question, Mirka Chase. It was uh, essentially an adapted version of Centipede. However, there was a way to break the game to make it slow down so you could score absurd amounts. So the only way you'd actually die is if you were surrounded by three eggs. I used to abuse the systems in that fight so much. It was a great, great game. game. Oh, it was absolutely astounding. I know it's still going, but I don't know who owns it. I think it was sold off from the original creators. I who imagine it's some crazy, crazy site now. now. Belongs to some just some conglomerate Mike media Zuckerberg. company. Oh, no worries. You killed your pets. <laughs> for a long time, my sister would go back every single year just for the advent calendar, just to collect new items. I have to wonder, because that was one thing I lucked out on when I was a very early user, because it was before the Battle Dome opened, and I bought this thing called the Hypno Helmet. And when I went back into Neopets, I had, when they finally opened the Battle Dome up, because I was like, oh yeah, I get to fight with them now? Cool, I'll actually play the game. Turns out the Hypno Helmet was worth like... 3 million Neo points at that time because it was a really broken item. And I'm like, wow, I'm rich now. Sold it, painted all my pets, blew the money in three days. <laughs> so for those, for those of us who like anime and were online at the time, who, how many of you went on Gaia Online? Ooh. Oh, a round of applause, Absolutely. round of applause for those of us who are a shame, shame. No, there no, so many no hands, shame. but no applause. No, so no. Many, so many hands, but no applause. I actually never went to Guy Online as you a never, kid. You never? No, you? no, because I was on a different part of the web, uh, the internet that would make fun of Guy Online, because that was Hotel around when I was 15, and that's the perfect time to join 4chan. See, I was on... Abo. 
Have a hotel, hotel Rob. Yeah, I was on Have a Hotel. That was my thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I went to Have a Hotel too, but for very, don't very s- different reasons. Don't you say, <laughs> pools, say pools closed? Pools, I, swear. I swear. Oh, I was one of those kids. Uh, uh, under okay. I was 15. That's my defense. However, yes, pool was closed a lot. <laughs> Mic drop. It's funny when you think about like all these classic like where these things stem from because it's like now you got like the playstation home and all that but it's like we were there when this stuff was buggy and new and weird and your parents would always tell you it's like watch out for those people online they just want you for your body and then you met those people online and you're like oh wow they actually exist (laughs) (laughs) yep that explains so much more about you andrew oh another question a question over here from you oh i like your goomba on your keychain (laughs) Okay, you guys were talking about old game shows on uh, YTV. Um, Does anybody remember the show Uh Oh, the old? Yeah. <laughs> Getting slimed was amazing. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh oh. Okay, so the <laughs> I actually didn't grow up with YTV. They actually came so <laughs> apparently, apparently, I was so mad. Bay. What I remember coming to Thunder Bay was uh oh. And bananas in pajamas. I never saw bananas in pajamas when they came here. I remember when they brought uh oh, because it was one of my sister's friends who had actually made it on the show to compete. I don't think he won, but I remember cheering for him really, really hard, and I always wanted to try one of those challenges. I'm actually curious, because like, that's one thing that really doesn't happen anymore. You don't really see any like kid game shows. We used to have a ton in the 90s you had, and it was always like versions of like the adult ones. Jep, Wheel of Fortune 2000, Guts, uh, Legends of the yeah, Lost Gu- Temple. Guts was the, was the one, one with the wall. With the wall. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but they don't really do that anymore. It's, it's kind of sad because I used to love those. Oh. Yeah, no. Uh, I, I was kind of one of those cool things because it actually started out uh, as an earlier show on YTV as well. Uh, I think it was It's Alive. And they started including the Grogs, which a lot of people forgot from YTV. When they brought their version of the Canadian Discount Muppets to YTV, they had the Grogs and they had the other ones I can't remember. Fraggles? No, it was that like no. blue and they had the yellow birdie mouth thingy. No idea. Vague memories. I, I, but I know what you're talking about, but I have no idea what they were called. But there's also a new... Um, New game show hosted by one of our guests here, the Nostalgia Critic, called Pop Quiz Hotshot. Oh, I haven't seen that. It's actually kind of funny. It's your basic quiz show, but the twist is if you can make the critic laugh with a horribly bad answer, you still get points. Actually, speaking of game shows, one that I've absolutely loved that started recently on sci-fi, it's called Geeks Who Drink, and it's right up my alley because it's just about getting really drunk with two uh, you know, geeky celebrities and trying to answer trivia questions. I want to be part of this. Beat, beat the, the geeks. geeks. Heck yeah, I yeah, always want. Absolutely. Won. I love, I love that, that show, show too. Heck, I, was tr- I couldn't do it in enough time, but I was trying to figure out a way of making Beat the Thunder Geeks here. Ooh, maybe next year. Maybe next year. We're going to have to study up though. Cause you just have to have pick, to pick a, specialty a specialty and go, and go with, with it. it. Comic books, movies, video games. Boom. That could work, but I have to go. Oh, I have to narrow my movies. There are so many movies out there that I have not seen. I'd be, I'd be better at animation. I could do that. I'm, uh, uh, I'm challenging Megan Mag- Mag- if she's video, video games. games. Ooh. Oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> now, me, me and Kyle actually had a score to settle last night. So we absolutely love Kyle. And well, since we found out that Kyle was coming back for KetaCon, I invited him to be on the show with us because that's where we really started with, uh, with me and him just talking on the mics. So. I'm kind of evil sometimes, and sometimes, I, sometimes, bit. okay, a lot of the times. So I had one of our mutual friends find out when Kyle's flight's coming in, and then I had about I think we had about thirty people show up there, roughly, hiding behind the carousel. So when Kyle walked out and saw Mika, we just screamed at him like a fanboy, going Kyle. At 12.06 12 12 midnight. midnight. At 12.06. throw that out there. Out there. It's, it's like, like the, the, the whole airport's, airport's empty, empty minus, minus like three older, older people, people and then them. them. But we had a score to settle. And I hugged him to death. We you did. thought you could out hug me. Listen, Listen bear, bear hugger's, hugger's gonna, 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 gonna come back, back at one, one point, point and I'm gonna, I'm gonna win. win. I anticipate this rematch. Now the big <laughs> thing I need you to train up for me though 
is on Mario Kart. That was, that was such, such a, a bad, bad time, time for, me. for me. I know. I came last, last like, like every, every single, single race. race. I still have an ongoing reigning supremacy about Mario Kart. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm good at Mario Kart. Blah, blah. I'm obsessed with Mario Kart. It is probably my favorite game series, which isn't for a lot of people. I remember back when Mario Kart DS came out, before I had an internet connection at home, leeching off the open Wi-Fi of people outside in 30 below weather so I could play the multiplayer. <laughs> Mario Kart is pain and dedication. Mario but I still like remember beating you at Mario Kart 64. Oh, and I will forever carry that shame. Dang right. Okay, so I think we have time for one last question here. Okay, just, just, uh, just wanted to add about the Mario Kart thing. Like, like when you play against your friends, and you can, s if you, if, fr if your friendship survives Mario Kart, it's got to be true, strong friendship. That's yes. very, very and true. However, during the uh, during the, while playing of Mario Kart, the big thing to establish is, is we are going to call each other the most reprehensible, offensive things we can think of. I'm so, so sorry, sorry for, for last, last night. night. <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing with Mario Kart, I, I have a very interesting memory about it because the first time I got to play it was when a friend brought it over for a sleepover, and that's the first time someone had ever uh, observed me sleep talking. However, I wasn't talking. I was swearing profusely all night because I was dreaming about Mario Kart. <laughs> I got in so much trouble in the morning because my mom thought I was just swearing with my friend the entire night. Okay, I'm going to do yeah. one last question. Question. Uh, this is something about anime now. Um, what is your favorite part in your favorite anime? Ooh, my favorite part of my favorite anime. I, I, may I take the first? Go for it. Go. The first time Goku went Super Saiyan, when I was a little kid, Ooh. I felt the hairs on the back of my neck rise. Because it's like, what's going on? What is this? Oh, my God. And then he just slaps Frieza, gives that epic speech. I am the hope of the universe. I am the light that cries out for justice. I am Son Goku, and I am a Super Saiyan. Absolutely, Absolutely greatest, greatest moment. <laughs> so that, oh. yeah, the, I have to go with that too. Cause I mean, it was a huge build up to this as well. It was like 16 years of episodes before <laughs> yeah. we finally saw him transform. And when he finally did, sploosh. I was so, so happy. I graduated college at that time, time, just so you know. Like, like that, that whole scene, scene I yeah, went to college. The, the, the <laughs> time it took for the Kafriza fright, you, know, you grow up, you have kids, you know, you figure out time travel, you go back in time. That's how long it took for that fight scene. At least that's how long it felt. Oh, Megan, what about you? Your favorite oh, scene from your favorite anime. So, I have to think. Okay, so my favorite, my favorite moment from an anime is from Nana, the music anime. And uh, it's when we find out that uh, not, uh, Hachiko, her boyfriend, is actually cheating on her with a woman named Sachiko. <laughs> and the reason why I like this is because Sachiko actually meets Hachi. I said Hachiko earlier, sorry. She meets Hachi and she's like, no, I can't do this anymore. She's too nice. Like, I, th I had this idea that your girlfriend was, like, rude and everything and I just was okay with cheating, but I don't want to do this anymore. So she, she was, didn't want to be the other woman. Mine's pretty low-key, because um, if I'm trying to think, because I'd have to go with Dragon Ball Z with that moment if I'm talking about the biggest impact a scene made at me as a kid. However, the happiest I think I was for an adaptation of an anime was with Panty and Stalking, and it's very, uh, it's very small. It's the very first time Garter got to speak. I was just, this is perfect casting, wow. And I absolutely loved every single moment Garter was on screen. It was, it was a, a fantastic, fantastic show, show as a whole. whole. Um, um, so actually, yeah, actually, I have a different, different Dragon, Dragon Ball moment, moment that was my favorite. Ooh. Mine actually, Mine actually came, came, came from a from movie. movie. Oh. When, when he fought, fought uh, when Goku, Goku fought, fought Janempa, and he, like, like full-on full dragon fist, fist through him, him, and he absorbs, absorbs into, into himself, himself transforms, transforms into a whole new version. And I was like, like what just what happened? happened? <laughs> He's even better. The teleportation animation for him with the cubes. Yeah. He pixelates into the... Comes into a new, a new location. location. Perfect. Perfect. 
So I think we're going to wrap it up here, folks. Now, I want to thank you so much for coming out and supporting. Always support your local geek community. Thank you so much for coming to KetaCon. Now, if you want to continue the conversation, we're going to actually post this. It's going to air on Sundays at 1030. It's when our show always airs, Sundays, 1030 on 102.7 FM, CILU, or around the world at luradio.ca. Now, and we always play geeky music, and we absolutely love it. But if you want to com- continue our conversation, follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak, or follow us on Twitter at thundergeeks. Want to send us some email? Thundergeeks at luradio.ca. We're going to hang out here a bit. Got some watermelon Jolly Ranchers left. I think we got some things to sign. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you.